Hi, my name is Brian Kaplan. and welcome to this week's Ask Brian part of our weekly newsletter. Uh, the newsletter is called Monday Morning Data Science. You can sign up. Uh, there's a link in the video description below. There's also a link to ask uh, ask a question. I you know answer one a week. I get to as many as I can. Okay. Um, so this week I'm going to answer a question that I think is kind of a softball. And someone asked me, "What's the best R studio? What's the best R integrated development environment?" And then I'm already sort of slipping there and showing you my preference. So, uh, you know, I should talk for a second about what an integrated development environment is. So, I consider a, the, to, there to be kind of a big difference between an, a true IDE and a code editor. So, a true IDE has, you know. Um, is really tightly coupled with the language that you're programming in and the environment that you're programming in and really has a lot of tools to help you build kind of products. So as an example, our studio um, has, you know, a, a lot of things like code completion. If you build an R project, it has a lot of the menu items dedicated to creating R projects. It has a lot of elements in the in the software that help you develop a workflow for creating projects in that language or using that language. And that's more of what an IDE is as opposed to a code editor whose primary function is just to edit code. Now, all the code editors that I listed out below that you might consider using, like Sublime, I think seems to be the you know everyone's favorite one, have these plugins that kind of turn it into an IDE as well. So none of these are just purely code editors. They all have IDE functionality, uh, though less so than something that's completely dedicated to that programming language. So Sublime seems to be the big one in terms of code editors. Then there's Atom. I like Atom quite a bit. And when I used to use a Windows computer, I liked Notepad++ quite a bit. Um, if you're on Linux, the GNOME editor or whatever the default editor is in, in GNOME, and the same thing for in um, KDE, they're, they're pretty good and they have some R syntax highlighting and things like that built in. Now, I'm going to say, without a doubt, my favorite IDE for R is RStudio. And we can really talk about in terms of R development, there's before RStudio and after RStudio, sort of um, BRS and ERS or ARS um, time scale. And it really just changed everything. So RStudio really uh, sucked the wind out of a lot of these other uh, you know, tin R and other other projects that also develop very nice R IDEs. Um, you know, R Studio has just kind of taken over a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to cover that, but there are a bunch. And I'm you know I'm giving them short shrift. There's a bunch R K Word, um, uh, which I think is the KDE one. Uh, R Commander. There's a there's a bunch, and many of them are quite good. And so you should think about those as well. You can look into them, but I really think if you're getting started now, you should really just uh, consider RStudio as your development environment. And there's a couple of things that RStudio has that's unique to it that really fill in the gaps for my needs that um, nothing else has even close. The one thing, the first thing that I would say is RStudio's really tight integration with Knitter. So whenever I create a data project anymore, the first thing I start with is a Knitter document, not a .r file. And I really like how even if I'm just creating a report for myself, not even creating a report to give anyone else, the fact that I can have all this text that's not code comments, but really text describing what I'm doing and describing the project in detail and describing the steps that I'm doing in between code chunks, that is invaluable for me. And when I look back to projects that I've done with a nicely created knitter document, I can get right back into that project immediately because I've left myself a really clear path of breadcrumbs to get back into the project. So, and the fact that our studio has this incredibly tight integration with knitter now, um, just really to me is is one of its best selling points the second i guess another thing i said too but i think i'm going to do more uh the second thing that i like quite a bit is if you're creating an r prod uh, uh r package r studio now has all of these uh utilities for testing and checking and doing uh the r package development but in a way you don't have to remember all these commands and you can kind of do it in all the same space 
And, you know, if you're the kind of person who only likes to do things at the console, maybe it's a little annoying, but I've gotten used to it and I like it a lot. Um, the third thing I would say, and this is a big one for me, is if you want to run your IDE from the cloud, none of these other solutions, except save one that I'll talk about in a minute, are applicable at all. So there is no cloud sublime. There is no cloud atom editor. There is a... Um, a cloud editor called Cloud9, which I used, which is quite good, but it just had R syntax highlighting and then a command line. And you so you could make a pretty functional R environment from that, but it wasn't anything like R Studio. But what I do now is I run from DigitalOcean or LightSail or EC2, I run a server that runs R Studio on top of it and go to it as a server, and it looks just like the RStudio desktop environment. And I've been told by the RStudio folks that's because the desktop environment is just really kind of bringing up a little local browser for you. Um, so it's identical. And I like that a lot. It, it you know, it prevents me for, or it saves me from having to have like, you know, a, a, you know, a computer that I carry around that has all the software installed on it. Now I just open up, a, you know, any one of the couple of cheap Chromebooks I have laying around and I have my same development environment everywhere. Um, so that to me is a really killer feature that nothing else even comes close to duplicating. So I would definitely say RStudio. Now there's this other option and then there's another option which I'm not, I'm not really gonna mention. So the other option is Emacs. And then if, if you're gonna use Emacs, then uh, you want to install this Emacs add-on called ESS, stands for e Emacs Speak Statistics. ESS has been around for a long time. Um, um, so Emacs is the kind of thing where to really get good and functional in Emacs, you have to spend a lot of time with it. And if you do enough of it, um, it, it you become like... Um, you know, an Emacs samurai, and it's sort of difficult for you to think about doing anything else. I mean, you're a samurai. Samuraiing is what you do now. So, um, you know, if you have the mindset where you like to, you know, be like a Shaolin, you know, Shaolin monk studying in the in the temple for years to become uh, an expert, then Emacs is sort of like that. But once you get functional in Emacs. You would be amazed if you see someone great at Emacs how fast they can do things. Uh, and so I spent about you know maybe fifteen or twenty years using Emacs, and I got fairly functional in it. And um, it you know it I can still do things in Emacs faster than I can in any editor. But it just for me it doesn't have a lot of these add-ons that I want now in a modern IDE. Uh, but for many people, that is secondary to the fact that they're incredibly fluid and functional in Emacs, and that's what they really care about. The second fact about Emacs that's super useful, if you log into a server and you don't have any way to tunnel the X connections or serve up the um, display from that remote connection, you can you know, basically have your full R Emacs environment. You can run it there, no problem. And I do that all the time if I'm like working on a server where I, you know, I just need to go in and run a, run something really quickly. Um, you know, you can't get graphics, of course, by you know, by definition, by the sort of statement of the way I'm suggesting you're starting from this problem, you don't have graphics, but that's not your concern. You just want to log into a server, make some changes to some software, and run the program on the server, you know, and then log out. Uh, th that something like Emacs is great for that. And I will say there's also this other software called VI, um, kind of crazy people use VI, um, but it's, it's older, I think it's older than Emacs and it's similar in the sense that if you're super functional in VI, it's like you're a wizard and people watching you have no idea what's going on. Um, so at any rate, those are your, those are some of your kind of big choices you have for, Code editors for R, again, you know, my recommendation is unless you're already an Emacs user or already a sublime wizard or something like that, where it would be really detrimental to your workflow to switch, I would say, you know, do all your R editing in R Studio. Um, one final thing that I would mention though is R Studio is really good for R knitter documents, markdown files, and some other kinds of files, but you know, you, it's probably not the best to edit a MATLAB file or something like that. Whereas Emacs, you can you could 
uh, couple all your development needs in one software, one, you know, one code editor. Same thing with Sublime and Atom and all these other things. So that that is a ding against R Studio. But for me, for a person like me that does most of my stuff in R, that it's not so big of a problem. Okay. All right. So I will create another video next week. That's my two cents about R IDEs. Basically, to sum it up, use R Studio. Um, and uh, I'll have another video next week. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, ask a question, sign up for the newsletter, and I'll see you again.